spend enough time with my wife and my kids. It's like work is first, and my family is a close second. I'm a, I'm a distant third, bringing up the rear. By a miracle of modern science? I just need a little time for myself. Doug Kinney is about to get the solution to all of his problems. The one thing he needs more of. Doug? Your clone? Himself. Travel behind the scenes for a special HBO first look, which takes a multi-dimensional peek at a very multi-dimensional comedy from the director of Groundhog Day, Harold Ramis. Starring Michael Keaton, Andy McDowell, Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, and well, Michael Keaton. <sighs> Sorry, Steve. That leg's gonna have to come off. In Columbia Pictures' newest comedy, Multiplicity. In the world of filmmaking, there is one element that pulls an entire production together. In the making of Multiplicity, it pulled over 200 people together. All right, movie fans, what is that one element that, that connects the producers, writers, directors, production designers, gaffers, grips, best boy, the sound mixer, sound engineer, extras? What is that glue that if you don't have it, you don't have a movie? No, it isn't the financing, although that was a really good call. It's a story. Plans before we start working on the back. Well, Doug Kinney is the guy who is a uh, kind of supervising or manager or supervisor for a large construction company. He's uh, really pushed, uh, asked to work far more than he should work. Oh, oh, My fax machine's gone psycho again. And then he has to come home and he's trying to put his own house together and uh, be a father, be a husband. You miss campfire girls. <laughs> Honey. I'm not in Campfire Girls. I'm a brownie. Andy McDowell plays his wife, Laura, and she's, you know, beautiful and sweet, and he's got no time for her. We hardly even see you now. Can you just tell him you don't want to do it? Yeah, sure. I can say no if you want to start catching your own food. My expectations of what I think he should be doing at home are not being fulfilled because he's having such a hard time at work. Well, I was thinking if you could just help out a little more with the kids. How? When? How am I going to work that out? I just meant, you know, in, in emergencies. My whole life's an emergency. Finally, you know, it's, the tension's been been mounding in his life, and he kind of, you know, has a minor snap out. He meets this scientist, and he offers Doug some help. But Doug doesn't really know what this help entails. What do you do? I make clones. OK. This is a big concept to Doug. This is a big concept. But uh, it's reached the point where he figures, let's do it. Did you see that movie, The Fly? Mm -hmm. You know, where Jeff Goldblum comes out, he's got these enormous eyes, you know? I mean, mm. peripheral vision is one thing, but, you know, this is it's a bad look. It takes you just as you are now. That's the clones, exactly the same. In other words, you wake up, and at that moment, you have all your feelings, all your memories, all your quirks. And then, because you have different experiences, you begin to diverge. So, uh, where are you from? It's not like, unlike, you know, I'm not sure you've driven down the freeway and seen, you've seen yourself drive by, right? That's not, that hasn't happened to you? Oh, yeah, it's happened to me. I've seen myself at stop signs. But anyway, all right, stay down low. Really low. Really low. Lower than this? What, do you want me to get under the car? Good, good, good. The car's not over. The first clone that comes out of Doug is all, all male, really macho guy. We'll clean some stuff out of here. We'll put some rugs down, get a TV, get a stereo. It's a, it could be a cool place. Hey, 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 you know what we got to get? We got to get one of those satellite dishes, you know? Get every sport going, get all the movies. Going. I don't know if Laura's going to go for that. You're whip partner. I'm not whipped. <laughs> you Doug says, do you want to be cloned? Yeah. Or they asked Doug, do you want to be How do I, uh, here, give me a, um, uh, give me the, give me the, yeah, let me explain. This is easier. Now, Doug. We have Doug. We have X. Doug's trying to handle this, 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 and this. Can't seem to do it because they're attacking. They're in an attack zone. 
Okay. Doug's just trying to contain. Two will handle the O that represents work. Between the two of us, we're gonna get a lot of stuff done. We're gonna kick some ass. Freeing Doug up, giving Doug more what? Say it with me. Time. Very good. Hey, you gotta pick up the kids and uh, wash their hair, and take them to a dance, and get a picture of them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was, I was just teeing off here. Not today, pal. See you later. Why? Equal family. You're going. I'm not going. You're going. I'm not now. going. Now, Doug says that doesn't work. Doug decides to get another ex. Two. Like you to meet three. Hi. How are you? Are you nuts? Three, eat, eat, handling family life. Wait a second. I'll get the dishes, and I'll drive the kids to school. You take a couple extra minutes for yourself. Thanks. These two guys get together, and they create something we call four. What the hell's wrong with We made a copy from two. And you know how sometimes you make a copy of a copy? It's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. I can't even explain what four does. There's no way. Maybe you should show. Let's just stop for a second. Run out, run out 15 seconds of four. I'll be here, I'll be here. See what I mean? Where do you, how do you say, here, four. Cloning as a solution does not help. In fact, it makes things more complicated. Hey, Law, hey, honey. They're all doing their best. They're all trying to help. Uh, but uh, the confusion just grows and grows to the point where uh, all hell breaks loose. Meet your wife. What the hell are you doing? God, Doug, you're driving me crazy. No more Dugs. That's it. Right, this is right. plenty, I think. What is going on with you? You got fired. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody. Nobody has sex with my wife but me. Hey, talk to him. Fabulous. To clone a human being, and some say that it's virtually impossible. I know a place that figured it out. Hollywood. They figured it out a long time ago. Hmm? It's amazing. In the early days of creating the effect of twins, stand-in doubles with wigs and careful camera angles would be used to help create the illusion of two distinct characters. When both characters were needed to appear on the screen at the same time, filmmakers used a crude but effective in-camera trick. They would actually create a split. You'd, you'd, you'd black out part of the lens, have the camera completely locked down so it would never move, shoot one character on one piece of film, then expose another negative with the other character, and then using a device called an optical printer, uh, you marry the two images. Now sit down! Here, we wanted to have this very organic feeling that there, so that you didn't get the sense that there were any restrictions on the interplay. I'm the buzzer. So how do we shoot this like a regular movie? How do we not feel restrained by the technology? To answer that question, three months before principal photography was to begin, the filmmakers decided to run a series of on-camera tests. The purpose was to experiment with Keaton and find out just how far they could push today's technology. He was amazed. He said, you see this pause? You can fill here. You can overlap yourself. You can improvise over yourself. You can interrupt. You know, you can make faces at yourself, mock the other character. And suddenly, hey, this is great comic freedom. Did she sleep with my wife? Hey, let's have some rice cakes and tea. Or... I'm sorry, Doc. She's a powerful woman. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. For multiplicity, the filmmakers set their sights on breaking all the rules in order to give Michael Keaton the ability to act and react with himself in the same scene. To do this, Ramis would team up with cinematographer Laszlo Kovacs, whom he had met while acting in Ghostbusters. Leading the 50-person visual effects team would be four-time Academy Award winner Richard Edlund famous for his incredible effects in Star Wars, Ghostbusters, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And completing the team was, of course, actor Michael Keaton, whose task it was to bring the clones to life. Using green screen technology, an effect shot is built through a series of layers, each containing Keaton playing opposite a stand-in. These layers are then married together, creating a composite shot. Now, Chesney, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I took a photograph of you, and then I took a photograph of me, and I cut me out right along the outline of my body and pasted my picture next to yours on your picture. It would look like we were together in the same picture. Before anything was put down on film, each and every complicated effect sequence was carefully thought out and illustrated in a complete set of storyboards, serving as a sort of blueprint for Keaton and the filmmakers to follow. First, as the character of Doug, Michael plays a scene acting with stand-ins, who simultaneously videotape his performance with a small handheld camera. When the filmmakers are satisfied with the performance, Keaton goes off to change makeup, hair, and wardrobe. Then he returns as the next character. Action! Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? He takes What's the up, place Doc? of the stand-in and does the same scene again. Go this time, watching a monitor which plays back the previous videotape performance he just gave. With this as a guide, Michael is able to actually react to every nuance and facial expression that he just made. While the action is being put down on film, it is simultaneously sent to a trailer on the set, where the visual effects team from Boss Film combine the two layers. This replaces the stand-in with Keaton's second performance, and the new composite images are then sent back to a monitor on the set so Ramus and the team can instantly see exactly what is going down on film. Yeah. Hey, Roger, can I real fast see the reverse? Yeah. Michael sees one performance being composited with another performance in real time, and so the shot becomes alive as Michael plays the other role. Michael sees the little subtles and differences in timing that he has to do, and so he's able to, in, in one take or two, uh, know how to make the shot click. And then, then all of a sudden, it snaps into focus, and, and you believe it. Three, three, one, two, right. three, uh -huh. I think we ended up with 125 effects shots in the movie, which is a lot. The big fear was not that we couldn't do it, but that would it be so cumbersome that it would be like a straitjacket for Michael and Richard as the effects supervisor. They were determined to make it as loose a fit as possible. Yeah, let me do it uh, another way. Although the filmmakers took every precaution with the technical process, oh, one thing is sure. Whenever special effects are involved, things don't always go as planned. Ready, good, cut. 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 I don't know how we ever imagined that this would work. Get your time, folks. Action. Up there in the house with Laurel. What's going on there? Cut. Well, what were you doing in the bed with Julia? Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Soup. <laughs> and the technology and the equipment. What do you have left? The performance. For multiplicity, there was one actor who could handle the challenge of being cloned and cloned and cloned and well cloned for 98 consecutive days. That actor? Was Michael Keaton. Hi, Vic. Hi, Vic. He definitely was like right up at the top of our list, and he's proven to be fantastic. I mean, he transforms into these characters, and it's just you know amazing. I like pizza. I like it. We're gonna need a cage. We knew ultimately that uh, you know we could produce visual effects that would blow everybody's mind, but if if the performance wasn't there. The movie wasn't going to work. It was all based on performance. I've been working since I was 12 years old. It's break time. It is. And Doug, I think it's that 12-year-old that's saying, Doug, how about a visit? You need, you need time for Doug. What a suck. No. He's uh, open. He listens. He's receptive. He doesn't have rigid, fixed ideas of his own, although he does have ideas.
ideas and instincts that are great. Let's go! For an actor to prepare for one character is difficult. To prepare on a certain day for four characters is like, you know, beyond the call of, uh, you know, sort of regular acting uh, trade. So I was constantly thinking when I was doing one, I was wondering, I was trying to figure out what the other guys are going to be doing or, or making room for the other guys or... And then, then I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, what am I asking this for? I'm going to do it. I know what I'm going to do, or I'm, I better figure out what I'm going to do. But it became like three people and me. There's three good-looking guys. Thanks. He's right, he's right. Michael did it with tremendous courage, and uh, it, it encouraged me to, uh, to sort of reshape the movie in my own mind and just let it expand and go further in comedic terms. But he, uh, he really took it and just ran with it. Yeah, simple. Excuse this is me. Is it was like being on Jeopardy for crying out loud. They were grilling. And one of the keys to it is the overlapping dialogue so that he can actually get into arguments with himself and step on his own lines. And if he stays as himself, he has only himself to blame for it. Hello? Here, Doug. The scenes in which all the clones appeared on the screen at the same time, like the shaving scene, posed the greatest challenge to Keaton and required some rather unorthodox acting methods. There were so many clone shots in that uh, in that scene. Michael had to just keep me do one guy and then run out and change wardrobe, makeup, come back and do the second guy, run out and hair, makeup, wardrobe, come back, twenty five times. Do what you gotta do. I do I do a five o'clock shadow. Just grow it, and then shave it. If I needed this, needed the beard, I just grow the beard, and then go and do three and shave it. He's playing four, very, four distinct characters. I mean, it's, it's, the work is just so great. The work that he's doing is wonderful. And, and each, each character is, is very clearly defined. I gained, I gained sometimes as much as 14 pounds within three or four hours. And then bring it back down for three. He watches his weight. These characters, uh, I, I mean, clearly they're in his range. Uh, but no one's ever seen anything like three. Go like this. You got a little something right here. Just, there you go. There you go. I described it as like Martha Stewart on acid. I fold once. I fold twice or three times, whatever you need to fold it. But I don't like to roll it. Sometimes people just roll it over, but I don't like that because then you got that lump right across the center. It rolls around the fridge and everything. I like to fold it down so it's nice and neat flat and no air is in there because what? Air is our enemy, isn't it? It's fun watching him. I, I, you know, I just, uh, the scene we did the other day was just so fantastic and he ad libbed a bunch of it. Two tucks in a fold. See? You know what I do? It's like. <laughs> Tuck. <laughs> please, please wait. All right. I remember. Talk here. He sort of represents Doug's inner feminine self. He's sweet, he's nurturing, and he's caring. You need to get centered. I understand. That's a yeah. good idea, Doug. I need to get you. You deserve that. Thank you. I need to get centered. It's very important to keep yourself centered. And in this crazy world, hey, you know, you and I both know how, how you know, it's kooky out there. And you, you just got to keep yourself really centered. And, Together, and that's why I like to bake. Excellent baker. There's something about the basics of bread. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about a good warm loaf of bread that just fills me up, especially on a cold rainy day. You know what I'm saying? Three operates out of here. Probably. He's probably in his he's probably his emotional self and probably maybe a little more cerebral. Two is in this region. Two works out of here. Go like this one, because you got like Go, just go. Just kind of <laughs> try, try getting it this way. <clears throat> I said, just spit it out. Number two is just a real likable, you know, rough guy. Doug, I, I had no idea. I always assumed you were a happily married guy. <laughs> I've been sleeping in the guest house for a month. She doesn't even know I exist. Do you want to come back to my place? Yeah. Sometimes his behavior is a little gruff. But he gets your stuff done. You're fired. Take your New York watch and take your fat L.A. ass and get out of here. Masculine. Back to throw. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Hit him. Over the... All guy. He's competitive. He's workaholic. He's crude. He's gross. Wow. That's a lot of ribs. What was that, like a slab or something? He wants to start a restaurant where you <clears throat> track, hunt down, kill, skin, quarter, and cook your own meat. I'm starving. Number four is like a child. Just basically a 
Well, a big boy. Now, yeah, what about rule number one? Steve, what's rule number one? Hey, uh, Rain Man, run back in there and floss yourself, buddy, all right? He sort of represents Doug's inner child. He's all impulse and he's completely playful. Hey, we're gonna eat a dolphin. Hey, Lenny, you're not gonna eat a dolphin, pal. You're gonna pet one. You're just digging down into your inner core and getting the essence of the truth of the character. Four. It's like that. Is he safe with that razor? I mean, yeah, we take the blade out. Two and I shave at night while he's sleeping. It's cute, I think. Tough one to understand. Because he's complex. What you see on the surface isn't always what's going on inside. There's a lot going on in this guy. That's but that gets into the research, which I you know, don't want to get into, because it's just that's a that's a private, it's a private area for me. So those are the three sort of inner components of Doug that, that emerge with the, as the clones differentiate. It's very clear uh, that they're all parts of him. While the challenge to Michael involved the mental gymnastics of keeping track of multiple personalities, Andy McDowell faced something else entirely. The difficult task for her was simply to keep a straight face during her scenes with Michael. How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> She's got wonderful sort of natural comic timing. <laughs> <laughs> when we put her together with Michael, she was just great. They got along great. They looked great together. <laughs> she raised the budget just by laughing. She the budget. <sighs> gotta wait for. I'm sorry, Andy's laughing. That'll be lunch. We come back. She'd still be laughing. <laughs> We have laughed so much. The only thing is I feel really bad because that sometimes I, you know, I, I, I have to really bite my tongue. <laughs> Everyone just loved working on this movie because it was just a great, great uh, experience. It's like um, going to the fair or something and getting on a great roller coaster ride. So there you have it, the first glimpse of this multi-dimensional film. Now, if there's ever a time when, you, you know, you feel like there's just not enough of you to go around, oh, maybe right around the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we, we gotta do it again. Why? You have lipstick on your teeth. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Let's go back to the trailer, we'll do it one more time, and then we can go. I promise. Only if you make spinach ravioli. All right. Score! That's my favorite. Okay, garlic sauce. Can you make it with mushroom sauce? You can't digest oh. mushrooms. I know, I know, I know, but it tastes Talk so about good. Talk about it. For HBO's first look, I'm Ann Cusack.